What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2018 Genesis G80 Sport. Huge thanks to Joe and number one Cochrane Genesis for providing me with this brand new awesome G80 Sport to review for you guys today. So about the G80 Sport. Well, I reviewed one of these uh, with the 5 liter V8 back when it was the Hyundai Genesis. Now it is the Genesis G80, gone through a little bit of a transformation here, and this is the Sport model, which is new here for 2018, and looks really great. I love the way they sharpened up that front end. You have that more aggressive lower air down there, you have the brand new Genesis grille, and you have these bronze accents in the grille and the headlights and everything. It just really makes this front end look really sharp. Honestly, even better than a lot of the competition that's much more expensive. This thing just looks really cool up front especially coming over to the sides here you even have nice bronze little caps on the center hubs of the wheels that are a very nice dark wheel that looks great as well going out back there you still have the same great genesis looks you've had before you have a tiny little uh faux rear diffuser there i really love those taillights too when they light up on the genesis they just look really complex and uh, just really beautiful works of art to be perfectly honest and uh, overall i mean it's a very large car it's imposing especially here in black um but it just has a really nice presence to it and just looks so elegant and expensive honestly. Right, for the interior of the Genesis G80 Sport, well, it's a very nice place to be. Not a whole lot has changed since the switch over from the Hyundai Genesis to the Genesis G80 here, uh, but that's okay because it's still a very nice interior. It started out very nice and uh, continues to be very nice here with a few upgrades over the years. But anyway, first things first, seeing that in these seats, I absolutely love this cream and black combo for these seats here you have in the Sport. And then on the Sport models here, you have these bronze stitchings all throughout the interior as well, which look really great and just it's a really nice contrast here. Um, with uh, you know all the different colors in this interior but anyway these seats are very comfortable as you would expect from uh, you know a large luxury car like this uh, it has adjustable bolstering for the torso as well so you can make that as wide or as tight as you'd like I mean it doesn't go race car tight or anything like that but uh, you know this is the tightest setting and even for a thing guy like myself it's fairly snug just a little bit of wiggle room uh, but really feels great uh, and then the thigh bolstering is always fixed but it feels pretty good as well I, again not super sporty but again we're talking about a large luxury car um, so not expecting anything to too crazy here but just a really nice soft comfortable seat they're heated and cooled of course and overall they just feel great Next to the steering wheel in the Genesis, which I think here is actually a little bit smaller for the G80 Sport over the uh, prior year uh, Genesis models. And um, it's just a really great wheel. It has a nice 9 and 3 grip, nice little 10 and 2 notches. You have some metal accents here, more of that bronze stitching. And you do have some rubberized buttons here that would be nice if they were metal or something. Uh, but you do have metal paddle shifters here behind the wheel that feel a little thin, uh, not the heaviest of uh, paddle shifters that I felt, but they are you know nicely coated in metal here and are nicely placed. And so so nice to have those so overall I mean a pretty good steering wheel like I said it just feels a little small for how large everything else is in this interior but it helps to add a little bit of sportiness to the car gauges in the G80 Sport here are very nice not the most exciting gauges but very elegant looking uh, you know with a nice backlit just plain simple gauges here you have a nice large seven inch digital uh, screen there in the middle as well which shows your digital speedometer uh, has a few other basic you know things of information there nothing too advanced on that there but that that's okay, you know, just the digital speedometer is good. You can also toggle through all your driver safety tech and all that kind of stuff uh, that will display there for you. You also do have a heads up display here in the G80 Sport. And by the way, all this stuff I'm mentioning is all basically standard equipment. Every G80 Sport basically comes fully loaded, which is a stark contrast from all the German competitors and whatnot. Um, so everything I'm mentioning here comes with the standard starting price this one has of uh, just under 59,000 bucks, which uh, isn't bad for everything you get here. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, it's very nice. It starts off right up top here with a large 9.2 inch touchscreen that's really nice and high resolution. Uh, pretty simplified though, very easy to work your way through. You know, there isn't any confusing uh, split screen stuff or anything like that. It's just, you know, all your basic menus there that you've grown to expect here in cars with infotainments like this. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto too, which is very nice and something, again, that a lot of the competitors do not still have. Um, so that's awesome to have that on that nice large screen. Um, but the standard navigation that's built in also does look very nice, you know, and uh, the graphics and stuff look pretty good and so overall a pretty nice uh, screen there and also I've already listened to the sound system this is this lexicon um, surround sound system that sounds really great I love the metal speakers you have here up top as well for it um, but it's really a sharp bold sound and um, overall a, a really good sounding system uh, not you know crazy over the top amazing or anything but you know for a car of this class and stuff it fits right in and is properly uh, good sounding 
Coming down below the screen here, you'll see a nice little analog clock with, again, more of that bronze accents that I love. Uh, and then you have, you know, just your basic climate controls here up top, and then you have your volume and uh, radio controls and all that kind of stuff, tune knob down below here. And uh, they're, uh, the buttons feel okay. They feel a little bit loose, uh, but they do have a nice uh, finish to them that looks metal, but actually does feel more like plastic um, or very, very thin metal. But they look good nonetheless. They feel nice enough to use, um, and it's just nice to, you know, still have a volume knob and a tune knob, and, you know, the four basic knobs here is really great to have and uh, everything else is nicely laid out and very straightforward there coming down you can see your shifter here which is really nice and is inspired I think by some of the other uh, competitors but really it's just a perfect place to uh, lay your hand and uh, it's just nice and trimmed in metal here you know with your shifter gate and whatnot uh, you have your drive modes you have uh, your basic buttons down here so this is a touchscreen unit but you also do have a knob here um, to toggle through stuff if you don't like using your touchscreen for whatever reason so it's really the best of both worlds. It can act like an iDrive system or you can have the simplicity of the touchscreen, which I think is really, uh, you know, cutting edge. And now all the other comp competition from a lot of these other brands are now slowly doing the same thing. And I think, you know, hey, give people options. You know, some people prefer one way, some people prefer the other. Give them both options. It's not super hard. And uh, I think it works out great. So I'm really happy that they have that set up here as well. As far as storage space in the G80 Sport, it's pretty good. Um, first thing in the doors here, you have a large pocket that, that probably could fit a small bottle but doesn't actually have a bottle holder. That's the only thing I can really say that's missing in this interior as far as storage stuff goes. Otherwise, coming over to the center here, you have a nice large uh, center cubby here. You can fit a, you know, a couple of phones and uh, you know, knickknacks, things like that. This also is a QI wireless charging pad, so it works with uh, you know, the new upcoming iPhones and all the you know, newest phones that have the wireless charging. That works with those, so they're really nice. You can just play your phone there and it'll instantly charge um, then you have your two cup holders here which have a nice little cover over them you have another little slot back here where you can fit the key or some other you know small thin things like that and then you have the center armrest that opens up and splits in the middle here and then you have a nice large deep cubby there which has a power outlet a USB jack and another little coin tray up top here and uh, plenty of room there to fit you know anything you really want to fit in there so overall a uh, good amount of space there this armrest itself is a little firm um, it's covered in a nice hard leather but it's not the soft and so resting your elbow on it, I wish it was a little more softly padded. But while we're talking about the uh, materials in this interior, it is very good for the most part. I mean, you know, over here on the other side, this is nice and softly padded on the door for where you rest your left elbow. Um, you know, you have a nice little strip of leather that's softly padded here going down the sides of the transmission tunnel. Uh, you have metal door pulls. You have, like I said, the metal speaker grills. You have the carbon fiber trim, which again is trying to help accentuate this as the sport model um, and does look good. All Although it would have been nice to even see some kind of aluminum finish or something like that. You do have this aluminum little bar that goes across. Um, the only thing I can say that feels like a little bit uh, low rent still is up here on the tops of the doors. It does have a little bit of give and a, a little bit of plushness to it, but it's a little bit of a cheaper material. It doesn't quite feel like it fits in with the rest of this. I mean, I would say the interior quality is still on par with Lexus and stuff like that, but compared to some of the Germans, I think they have a little bit of a nicer interior qualities. But again, you're paying way less in this car, and so if that's the only little sacrifice you have to make on the interior and stuff like that, that's totally fine. Because um, overall, like I said, it's, this interior really feels nice. Backseat space in the Genesis G80 is massive. It is such a roomy and spacious backseat, and it feels that way as well. I mean, you open up those uh, large rear doors, and I mean, I'm five foot nine. Me sitting behind myself, I still easily have six inches of legroom to spare. I mean, plenty of space. Headroom still have a couple of inches there as well. Um, it's just a really nice backseat, and you have a panoramic moonroof here, standard in these two. So it really feels expansive and open back there as well. And uh, you also have a fold down center armrest, which has your controls for your heated seats and the sunshine shades um, and is uh, nice to rest your elbow on although again that could be softer as well for that center armrest back there um, it's still nice to have it nonetheless you have two cup holders built into there as well you have your vents here uh, towards the front of the rear seat as well so you can stay nice and ventilated and overall uh, just a really nice back seat uh, plenty of room and just really great to spend time back there trunk space the G80 is also massive you would think there was like a little bit of a compromise but I'd say this is actually this car almost feels like it's closer to the size of like a 7 series or something than a 5 series it's kind of a, in, in between um, most of the midsize and the full size so I mean you have a very large trunk still there uh, in the back of the G80 and it can fit all kinds of stuff easily fit four suitcases back there no problem um, so again you can you have so much space in this car it's really nice and expansive and uh, really well done job there by Genesis in that regard. 
All right, so start up and go for a drive. The Genesis here has these new key fobs that are really nice. It has a rubberized leather type feeling material here on it. And then uh, it's got new metal on the sides. It's got a really nice weight to it. It's nice and heavy and feels really high quality. One of the nicest keys I've encountered so far, honestly, a very nice key. Of course, it's keyless entry and push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the metal engine stop start button, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off in the 2018 Genesis G80 Sport. So, uh, first thing that I notice about this thing when I'm driving it is it is just so smooth. We're on a bumpy park road here and immediately it's just pillowy soft. Not in like a bad way, it's just so nice and luxurious. I mean, uh, a recent uh, car that I drove last year, the Cadillac CT6, which is similar in price and uh, size, is uh, you know a little bit uh, firmer than this is. So this uh, is just really soft and comfortable. I mean, the, I think the only thing that I can remember from recent memory that is smoother than this is the Rolls Royce Wraith that I drove last year. But it isolates you so well from the outside as well. It's just so quiet um, inside of here. You hardly hear anything going on outside, you know, within reason, but it's just like amazing. Just everything, I mean, I'm, I could whisper in here. It's like a library quiet uh, feeling. It's pretty impressive. Other things to note though about the G80 Sport is visibility is very good. Um, you have a very large windshield you can see out of very well. Uh, view out of the sides is good too with you know pretty uh, average sized side windows there view out of the back is pretty good as well you know with a pretty good sized rear window uh, it's a little ways back there since this car is so long um, but you know it's great and you also do have all the cameras yes, you have a surround view 360 camera so you can see everything uh, whenever you're parking and you have a forward camera so you don't run into curves you have backup cameras of course blind spot monitoring I mean this thing as far as safety tech has it all so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff uh, you know if the size does intimidate you and it does feel a little bit big going down the road. That's one thing I will say, um, especially if you're in a tighter area and whatnot, you know, it might feel a little snug. Um, but, you know, uh, it's a really great thing, especially when you're just cruising out on, you know, wider roads and whatnot. Uh, it just really is a nice thing to cruise around in. I also like to add, this thing is so smooth from a start. Whenever you're, uh, you know, just cruising along here, it's just really good with uh, just giving you a very smooth uh, initial takeoff there. This is an eight-speed automatic in these, and it's uh, really just uh, very smooth. You never even can really tell when it's shifting whenever you're just again cruising around in normal mode It's all very relaxed and polished and really feels well put together Alrighty, so let's turn it on to the straight road here and see how it does. I put it into sport mode and uh, Here we go This thing pulls pretty good. I love the sound of that V60. So this has the brand new 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 engine. The same one they're going to be putting in the Stinger and the G70 uh, Sports. And so it's a really <laughs> peppy feeling engine. So this thing has 365 horsepower, 376 pound feet of torque. And now you can still get the five liter V8 engine in the G80, just not in the G80 Sport for some reason. But that motor, even with that V8, only has seven less uh, or seven more pound feet of torque than this uh, twin turbo V6. So you're not really giving up a whole lot as far as torque goes. You're just giving up horsepower since that has 420. Um, and if you want that higher horsepower number, you can always check out my older Genesis uh, 5.0 review that I did. Um, but I gotta say though, this uh, this feels pretty good sounds good too but I mean it doesn't really waste too much time it does take a little bit longer than I'd like to figure out I want to downshift especially since I'm in sport mode the second I tap that gas it should be like all right let's go and instead it's not um, but again you do have the paddles for that so we'll try those out here all right I we got it manually in first gear here's another one manual mode <laughs> okay upshifts are quick it's <laughs> this thing and it doesn't feel super fast since you're in such a heavy large car but it is pretty quick and i'm like all right i gotta slow down a little bit here but man okay so this is better than i was expecting zero to 60 by the way for these is 5.2 seconds they do a 13.8 quarter mile at like 102.6 uh, miles an hour for the trap speed there and um so not a slash by any means again for a car that is as heavy as this one is these weigh around 4500 pounds so uh you know a very uh, large 
heavy vehicle, but you know, for this little, I mean, 3.3 .3 liters, think about it, with twin turbos, uh, it's a pretty small motor, and so for this thing to feel as quick as it does, it's really impressive, and you get this surge of torque from those those turbos um, that really love to just lift the front nose of this thing, and it, it feels quick, I mean, and I love, whenever I was cruising around a little bit earlier, I mean, these turbos, you can just idle along at 1500 RPMs, and they just instantly spool up and give you the surge you need, and so that you, know, you don't have to ever race this motor or push it hard in order for it to move this car around, uh, you know, even fairly quickly. It does it all, um, you know, with ease, but whenever you do put your foot into it, I really like the way that they turn, they tune these turbos. They're just really responsive and it feels really good and I also like the it's a little bit of a softer suspension setup I can tell so far as far as front and uh, rear loads go whenever you step on it it really likes to squat down and and uh, other things to know while we're in sport mode here throttle response is a little sharper again I feel like it could be sharper yet or it'd be nice if there was like a sport plus mode to take it a little bit further um, but again this is primarily a luxury sedan but whenever you want it to you know be really sporty um, it does do that very well the steering weight is also also pretty good here has a decent amount of feeling not a ton of feel but again I'm sure that's the way they set it up just for that extra refinement um, and uh, so but it does have a decent weight to it it's not super heavy but it's not too light either and so overall pretty good steering weight there as well but I'm just really impressed with how quick this 8-speed automatic shifts um, I think I remember it doing pretty well even back in the 5 liter but <laughs> this thing is just it does a really good job for what it is, I gotta say. This is putting a smile on my face. It's fun to go down a back road in despite its size and weight. It's uh, really great. Another thing that's really great is these brakes, which as soon as you touch the top of that pedal there, it starts giving you some real nice bite. It's a very natural progressive feeling for the brake pedal though, but it's just very responsive feeling brakes that feel well up to the task of hauling down this 45 pound, 4,500 pound car. Um, but now we're going around in a few more corners here. And uh, I can feel a little bit of body motions there, you know, whenever uh, it quickly drops off of camber and stuff there, it uh, feels, uh, you definitely feel like it's about 4,500 pounds, you know, there's really no masking that. Um, but it still, again, feels good. You just have to be conscious of what you're working with here. You can't treat it like a BRZ or something. Um, but whenever you go into a corner mindful for the weight you're dealing with, it does a pretty good job. This thing, by the way, is running uh, 245 wide tires in the front, 275s in the rear here for the Genesis G. Sports. So uh, a really good setup. Uh, you know, these are Continentals on this one. Uh, they feel pretty good. But coming up to this tight corner, I always take uh, see how the body roll is when you really push it. All right, so there is a little lean, uh, but then it, it kind of wants to get settled, but it does, it, it was moving around a little bit in that uh, in that tight corner there. So I wished it was a little more poised. I wish there's maybe some, uh, you know, dampers that went a little bit further to, you know, stiffen up the ride in this so that it wasn't quite as floaty through that really tight portion because it'd be fine if it was floaty but consistent, but it was like, okay, one minute it's like sticking it, the next minute it's like uh, bobbing around a little bit. And so it was a little disconcerting there. But <laughs> I'm really enjoying accelerating this thing, and I can't imagine this motor is this much fun in this car that's larger and heavier. You put this into those smaller cars, you got quite a package. Uh, I'm really excited again for the future Genesis models and whatnot. But anyway, um, now we're just cruising on a main road here, um, and again, this is where this thing shines and what it's meant to do is just cruise around in comfort uh, and refinement, and it does that excellently. Um, it's just a really nice thing, like I said, as a daily driver, of course. Um, you know, this is uh, meant to be an executive sedan, and it certainly feels that way. And um, but yeah, so I mean, overall, not bad as far as a backroads carver for what it is. Uh, but I still think they could go a little more aggressive the suspension setup and still not give up a whole lot of uh, ride quality. Um, but overall, like I said, pretty pretty fun car uh, that you know can do the Jekyll and Hyde thing pretty well as far as being sedate but being aggressive whenever you want it to be. But I'm going to drive around for a little while longer and get a better feel for the suspension and whatnot. Not come back and give you guys my final impressions. Alright, so I've been driving the G80 Sport here for a little while longer and man, I'm telling you what, this motor feels way more powerful than 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet. It is like 
I would say this feels closer to 400 horsepower easily. Um, I don't know if they're underrating this motor or what the deal is, but 365 in these days sounds like a small number. This thing does not feel like a 365 horsepower car. It feels much punchier than that. And honestly, I mean, I love V8 engines, um, and the V8 in the Genesis is great, but I'm personally not missing it a whole lot. Um, this tur these turbos just have so much more power down low. I mean, bringing out that V8 was, you know, fun, but this, there's just, you can't uh, beat the thrust of this uh, twin turbo V6. It just feels great. Um, other things to note here, uh, it's important to note this is the all-wheel drive version, so that also is part of the reason why it probably feels a little more heavy, um, but, you know, I think that if you did the, do the rear-wheel drive version, then it would have a little bit less weight to worry about, but I think the all-wheel drive does add a nice level of extra grip to this so that, you know, I haven't been fishtailing or, you know, I can apply the power through the corner and it, you know, handles it pretty well without really too much understeer or anything like that. Um, but that's one thing while, you know, when I was pushing it in corners here just a few minutes ago, I, it, it made sense to me why they did the Sport model with the smaller engine. Because whenever I first heard the announcement, oh, the Genesis G80 Sport, but wait, it's not gonna have the V8, it has a V6 instead, why? Um, one, because this motor feels basically as fast as the V8. And two, that means that it's a lot, a lot less nose heavy because, you know, you drop 1.7 liters of displacement off the front nose and guess what? That front end feels a lot lighter and that's one thing I do remember. It's been a few years since I drove the 5 liter uh, V8 version, but, you know, it did feel a little bit uh, more nose heavy, I think, you know, versus this feels a little bit lighter. It's still, um, you know, is again a heavy car like I said, but, you know, as I'm pushing it here on these uh, couple of corners here, it does feel just really pretty sharp again you're kind of limited I think tires are also a little bit of a limiting factor especially up front there whenever you're trying to steer a 4,500 pound car and you only have you know 245 wide tires I'd be nice to see like a 255 at least or you know maybe even something like a 265 would be great um, but again you can obviously change up tires and wheel setups and things like that if you'd like um, but overall it, it does a pretty good job and now the G80 Sport being the twin turbo v6 makes sense to me it it, it all makes sense and it's, as far as the hierarchy goes, it makes sense as well, since the G70 Sport is going to have the same motor. So Sport equals this motor, and this motor is a peach. I absolutely love it. Just <laughs> and the Sport mode has gotten better as far as the transmission. The more that I kind of just tap the gas, the more that it does give me that power that I was looking for uh, pretty quickly. Um, and I'm really impressed, again, with the manual shifting. It does do a very good job. The really tight corners are where it starts to uh, let you down a little bit, you know, where it just doesn't have the traction doesn't have the grip that you want to see. I could feel the car sliding in the ESC and stuff, kind of helping me out there a little bit. Uh, and also, uh, another strange thing, it disconnects you a little bit, is this steering rate, uh, whatever's going on with the weightness, uh, the weight of the steering wheel, um, it, it changes a little bit. It's just a, it's just, you can tell it's a discernible difference. It's very minute, but it's discernible so that, you know, whenever you really do push this thing, one corner, it's giving you one resistance, the next corner, it's giving you another, and it, it it's oddly lightens up mid corner sometimes which can be a little disconcerting because you're counting on a certain amount of resistance and feedback and then all of a sudden it like goes all light for a split second and it's like oh, okay what's going on like is that the front wheels is it the tires you know wh what's going on with that front end whenever it does that and I think it's just this steering rate they're trying to change it to accommodate and I think it's a speed based rack and so as you're slowing down especially into you know tighter corners it's like oh you're going a lower speed we can give you a lighter steering feel and it's like no like you need to keep it tight all the way through this corner regardless Regardless of what speed I'm at and I think that's the only little disconnect that I can pick up here on the G80 Sport otherwise like I said it's fantastic and um, really what's the most fantastic is you know on its own standing it's already really impressive um, at you know whatever price they priced it at but then you consider the price of these things um, and this one like I said comes with everything there isn't a million options you have to tick in order to get a decent model it has everything it's fully loaded basically and it's you know right under 59,000 bucks and when you look at at other similarly sized cars with similar performance and appointments and tech you're way over that I mean easily 15 grand over in most cases so um, it's 
it's a huge value proposition. Like the Genesis brand has always been, you know. If you aren't hung up on uh, a badge and you know a certain brand, and you're you know open enough to uh, you know consider stuff from Genesis here, I mean, it's a fantastic value. It always has been ever since they introduced uh, the Genesis uh, models here, and it continues to be. I mean, uh, not only is it you know great pricing, but it's also got a long warranty. You know, the famous 10-year warranty they have here. So I mean, you never have to worry about it. You know, because it's always going to be under warranty, really. Um, just allows you to just enjoy the car and not have to worry about it and uh, do it for a great price so that you know you can get a much nicer car than you should really be able to get for this money and uh, overall it's just very well-rounded vehicle I'd say but yes a huge thanks once again to Joe and number one Cochran Genesis for providing me with this very nice G80 to review for you guys today if you're interested in one of these all the contact info for Joe is gonna be in the description below give him a call or an email and he'd be more than happy to help uh, get you into one of these things because they're definitely at least worth a test drive I mean like I said if you want something this nice you want to save a lot of money uh, I feel like there's hardly a better value anyway let me know your thoughts on the Genesis G80 Sport in the comments below thank you guys very much for watching Watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.